Hello, Mick. Scott from Hey You Guys. Absolutely lovely to meet you. How are you doing? Not bad. Not bad, thank you. Uh, congratulations on the film. Thank you. Uh, it's been a while since we've seen you behind the camera. What was it about this story that, that, that spoke to you who wanted to make this movie? Uh, well, it's partly professional and, and partly personal. Professional is I like to do movies that have something of a social conscience to them. So I've made movies about um, journalists in the Iraq War, in, sorry, in the Gulf War, um, autism, uh, all kinds of stuff that, that actually has something to say about the world. This was one of those. Secondly, and maybe it should, I should have put this first, when something comes across your desk that's written by David Hare, you say, OK, I'll do it. I don't care what it is. Thirdly, 40 years ago, I went to Auschwitz with a, a now forgotten series, I'm sure, called The Ascent of Man. Jacob Bronowski presented a series of documentaries. I shot a uh, sort of iconic sequence with him at Auschwitz, where he walked into a pond, the, the bottom of which was covered with ashes that had been flushed there. And he walked into the pond and took a handful. I rehearsed it for him, so I did too. So this was kind of closure for that. It's quite a prevalent story given the, the, the events of the last year or whatever in terms of the, uh, alternative facts, I guess is the, the watchword. Yeah. Um, I bet you couldn't have realized that it would be so, so prevalent yes, in that sense. Could. We could. It's always going to be a timely story because there's always going to be people who deny the truth. And I think the only thing to do is to confront them. If, especially if you see something on the internet and you forward it on to somebody else or you quote it to somebody else, ask every time, who wrote this? And what's the source of this? And why are they saying this before you pass it on? It's the only hope we have. Truth to prevail. Uh, amazing cast as well, headed by Rachel and Timothy and Tom. You must have been so lucky. She's amazing. If you saw Deborah already, you'll know how accurately her personality and Deborah's personality kind of twin. Deborah spent a lot of time on the set and Rachel spent a lot of time talking to her. And I think they're both wonderfully uh, talented and headstrong and self-sufficient and articulate and powerful empowered women and uh, playing the one was the, I think a joy for the other. And Timothy and, and Tom as well I mean it rounds out such an amazing cast isn't it? Timothy makes a career out of playing parts that no one else will play I think <laughs> they're too difficult and too challenging and yeah. other actors will treat them as toxic and I think he treats them as a challenge yeah. and Tom Wilkinson is always great He's the voice of decency, and you couldn't ask for a better voice. And let me touch you quickly on two of your other movies, one that's close to my heart, L.A. Story, and obviously The Bodyguard, 25 years since, since those. Do you still look back on those with, with an immense pride? I do, yes. I, I have always liked to do something and then follow it with something completely different. So I followed L.A. Story with The Bodyguard, and I followed The Bodyguard with uh, a film about child abuse. So <laughs> draw your own conclusions. Oh, well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching... Hey, you guys! Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys. Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Yeah.